G'day guys, Russ here. After our recent survey about numeracy skills and fractions, I found it really helpful that members identified it's not so much which calculation to do with a fractions question, but rather identifying which calculation is required based on the information in the worded question. So it's really interpreting the question and identifying which calculation we need to do. That seemed to be the most challenging. So of course the questions could be a multiplication, it could be a division, addition or subtraction. Let me show you an example here, we'll work through it together. I've got a little tip for you that I hope uh, help you identify in this particular example the calculation that we need to do. Okay, so here's the example. We've got a teacher and she needs to order uh, enough pizza so that each student has one quarter of a pizza. Now there's 18 students in the class. How many pizzas does she need to order? Okay, there's our question. Now, sometimes these are fairly straightforward calculations, but as soon as we see a fraction in there, the brain goes fry and all mushy and it just doesn't function properly. So here's a little technique. I want, I want you to try and sort of visualize this when you're getting these questions. There are three basic components to any of these types of questions. And in this example, the first is the students. Now this could be anything. This could be boxes, this could be houses, this could be groups, it could be whatever. So there are students, and in this case we're looking at pizza. So each student needs an amount of pizza. And then that gives us the total amount that we need to order. And this is the part that we don't know. Okay, we don't know the total that we need to order. So let's extract some of the information. We've got our, let's just change the color, we've got our 18 students. And let's replace, let's replace the fraction for a moment. What if it wasn't a fraction? What if it was a whole number? What if each student need to have two pizzas each? They're hungry. 18 students, two pizzas each. How many pizzas does she need to order? Well, that seems pretty straightforward. 18, well, if there's two pizzas each, well, 18 times 2, that's 36. 36 pizzas we need to order. But, of course, it's not two each. It's a quarter of a pizza each. Now, for some reason, when it's a quarter, everything goes out the window. But if you replace that two pizzas each back to the quarter, the same calculation will give us our answer. 18 students times two pizzas. Actually, no, that's, let's just limit it to a quarter each. 18 students times a quarter of a pizza equals whatever that comes out to be. Now, we've interpreted what calculations required, now we need to calculate uh, or multiply that particular uh, question, the 18 times a quarter. Now, to do that, just really quickly, because I think most people are probably comfortable with this, um, but really quickly, 18, we can put that over one, and then we do our multiplication, one over four, and we simply multiply across, so four at the bottom, 18 on top, Improper fraction, we can't stop there. We have to divide the 4 into the 18. How many times will it go? It will go 4 times. I'll have 2 left over. I have 2 fourths left over. 2 fourths. All right, can I simplify that anymore? Yes, 2 goes into itself once, and it goes into 4 twice. So now we end up with, let me change color because we're running out of room. Now we end up with 4 and a half pizzas. Now, is that the final answer? The final answer would be five. Okay, I need to order five pizzas so that each student has enough to have one quarter each. Now, a follow-up question is likely to be, how much pizza is left over? Well, half a pizza is left over. It's unlikely you would be able to order four and a half pizzas, please. You'd probably have to order five. So be careful not to be uh, tricked by that. You'll need five, but be prepared for a follow-up answer how many pizzas are left over if each child got their quarter of a pizza. All right, so I hope that helps. And most importantly, I wanted to just get you thinking about these three boxes. And in this case, it's the total that's missing. If the total is missing, try just replacing the fraction with a whole number or even just an object. What if it was each child needed two pencils? If that was the question, what would you do? Well, I'd, I'd just multiply 18 by two. Okay, well, they're just... Forget the two, put the, uh, put the fraction back in and do the same calculation. And again, this is where you need to remember the formula so that you can then apply that formula. Now, there is, there is a shortcut with fractions, but it, if you're confident with fractions, you'll probably already realize there's a, there's a bit of a shortcut in there. If you're not though, you're probably just as quick 
to follow the process and as you get more and more confident as you practice it following the process and following those steps and you know, setting up this particular calculation here will happen very quickly quickly anyway probably more quickly than it would is if you're trying to remember what's that shortcut again um, but anyway the most important thing is that I wanted to share this idea with you of the three boxes and just replacing just replace that with something else to see whether that triggers what calculation might be required and if it does trigger the correct calculation just replace it back with the quarter and do that calculation okay so that's multiplying of course it would be a little bit different if we had to add them or divide them or subtract them and we'll cover those in another video but i wanted to make sure i covered that hope it helps and i'll see you in the next video